Hi, I'm Phil and I'm trying to improve my Brompton. I've cycled about 10,000 miles on my current Brompton. I've lugged it on trains and boats all around the country and I'd like to make it a little bit lighter. I'd like to try and improve the brakes and try and get the gears working a bit differently as well. I'm going to make a few videos as I go along so that you can see what I've done and in case I help anybody else. And if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them in the comments. This time round, we're going to have a go at a way of making a light back wheel, which I'm going to be able to swap out with the heavy back wheel I built last time. So as before, I need a rim. I've gone for the Sun Rims CR18. I've got a Surly single speed hub. It's got a disc brake fitting there and uh, was to me a very unusual cog fitting on the, on the other side. I've got 32 spokes, 32 nipples here, and I've also got some synthetic grease, which we're going to just put a little, a little top to make sure that there's enough grease on the spokes. And also, above all else, the most crucial object is Sheldon Brown's instructions on how to build a wheel. It was incredibly useful to me last time, it's going to be useful to me this time as well. And I also need to say huge amounts of thanks to the good people at SJS Cycles who helped me basically choose the right hub. I've gone for a Surly Ultra New Hub, I'll put all the links below. And that hopefully is uh, going to be something which I can swap out relatively easily with the Shimano hub I built last time in my previous video. Okay, so as before, the first spoke is the leading spoke, it goes in from this side, and in an ideal world you're going to be able to read the label through the valve hole, which hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to put it in right at the top. And it goes into the one just to the right of the valve hole. As with last time, I'm just going to tighten up a tiny bit so that it holds it. And again, on we go with seven spokes. So you miss a spoke hole on the hub, a single hole. And you miss three holes on the rim. So I've missed a single hole there and one, two, three on the rim. And there he goes here. Now this time I'm going to be hoping to build the rim two cross, which is to say that each of the spokes is going to cross two of the others as it goes into the rim. Never done it before, we're learning together, we'll give it a go. Okay, so very loose at the moment, but you can hopefully see there we have a hole between each of the spokes there and we've got three holes between each of the spokes on the rim. We're ready to move to the next one. And again, this time we're gonna go uh, with on the brake side. Okay, so now we have all those ones in again, and again you can see we have a single hole there. We now have groups on the hub of spoke, two holes, spoke, spoke, two holes, spoke, spoke, two holes. Onwards, as always, consult and sharpen. Okay, so you can see there that it's got two crosses. That's the spoke we're talking about. It's crossing this one right at the hub, and this one a bit further from the hub. 
So again, as with the, uh, the single cross wheel, which I built in my previous video, there's no way that I'm going to be able to get this spoke which I've just put in underneath the one that is crossed. There's just too big a gap. Uh, hopefully you can see on the video that there's maybe a one or so centimetre gap at the moment. So I'm going to have to live without the uh, what they call warm lacing. I'm just going to lace it up and then we'll see how stiff it is. Okay, and now with all the spokes in, you can see that even this brand new one I've put in crosses over two spokes, one about a third and a half, and one about a third of the way up. And we have a wheel in which everything now crosses two spokes. What I'm going to do is now go and trim it up uh, using the electric screwdriver and the wheel jig, and then from there uh, we'll talk about all the compatibility. So I've given that an initial true. I've got to say some of the spokes here are much, much tighter than others. So I'm just going to give them a bit of a stretch, see if that makes a difference. And then I'll put it in the wheel jig for more. However, one thing I do want to talk about is the compatibility, because the compatibility in this project is a bit of a nightmare. So here's the wheel, the last one built. And you'll be able to see straight away several differences between it. First of all, this is silver and this one is black. Uh, you can also see that this one has a weird screw axle and this one has an Allen key style one or hex wrench. And on the other side, you'll see that this has one sort of disc brake and this one has a six volt thing. The Shimano has the center lock. Now, at least part of that is just because I got this hub second hand and it was silver and so I kind of put up with it. Um, black is definitely the main color I'm going to be going for because that's what the crank set has to be, so it's going to be in black. Uh, and I've now come to the conclusion that I'm probably going to use single speed more than the hubbed gear. So if it really comes down to it and I don't, I'll probably just accept I've got to buy uh, another black uh, hubbed gear. Um, for the axles, I think that's quite an easy problem to solve. I'm just going to get, I think, uh, another axle like this to put on this hub here. And for the disc brakes, I'm just going to buy ones that look the same and hope that nobody notices. So that's how we've got this far. I'm going to chew this up fully in the jig. And then next time, we'll move on to the front wheel. Okay, so yet again, I appear to have had some problems. Uh, the first of which is that the trailing spokes were much, much looser than the leading ones. So I've begun to wonder if I could, in fact, get them behind, so lace them warm, warm lacing. As you can see, I've managed to do it that once there with only a few minor scratches to the rim. So I'm now going to see if I can uh, do a few more that way. Uh, I think effectively the, the, the spoke length has been calculated expecting me to do that. So I'm going to try and lace them underneath the spokes. You can see this one there goes underneath that spoke at the second cross and see if that makes a difference.
Okay, so I hope you can see this all right. Each of the laces now goes under the one behind it. And all of the ends are now sitting much better. Some of them were sticking out previously, so I think they would have caused a puncture. So hopefully, this wheel will now, it's absolutely rock solid, be able to cope with the brake, the pressures. Original Brompton wheel that I've got from outside. Okay, so that's coming at 1442 grams. Here's the wheel uh, with the Alfine hub in. Which, if I can balance it okay, is going to come in at about 260 grams. Two two six five, and finally, the wheel I built today feels a lot lighter. Come on! Okay, seven hundred and eighty-six. Brilliant. It hasn't got the cassette on it. Show. Hang on. Okay, nine hundred seventy-four, including the cassette. Without the rotor, we'll worry about that another time because it's quite heavy cassette that, eh? Um, okay, there you go, some sort of success. That was my second step in trying to improve my Brompton. Next time, I'm going to build a front wheel to go with it, so do subscribe if you'd like to see that. Uh, do like this video if indeed you did, and if you would like to see my efforts to build the hub geared wheel, which you saw at the end of this video do click on the left-hand side of the page.